everybody, it's Sunny coming at you from Fukuoka, Japan, and we have a new family member that I want to introduce you to. Come here, good girl. Meet Kioni-chan! This is Kioni! She is a rescue dog, and she hasn't even been with us for a week. Um, she has a bit of a sad past, uh, which I'll go over. She's been doing really, really well here, and we love her so much. So I wanted to introduce her to you guys and talk a little bit about her story and hopefully encourage more of you to also want to rescue animals. I don't know if I've mentioned this in previous videos, but Penny Lane and Eleanor Rigby are also both rescues. Penny and Eleanor were rescued in America and it is much easier to rescue animals in a country where you are a native, I'm sure. Um, we didn't rescue any animals in Scotland. We were both doing our masters, which was already crazy enough without adding an animal into the picture. When we were in Thailand, I noticed a post by Michaela. She is a vlogger here in Fukuoka. She's been living here for like a decade now, um, which is amazing. But I saw her post on Instagram and it was the video that I'm going to share with you guys of this puppy mill. I'm not going to show everything. I don't want to distress anyone too much. I've met some people that don't know what puppy mills are. So I do want to show a short clip of the footage from there as well. Basically what a puppy mill is, is that they take dogs, they put them in pretty terrible conditions, and they just breed them until they die. And that's their life there usually. But luckily, uh, this one got shut down. It got shut down because it was so terrible, which isn't a good thing, but it is a good thing that it got shut down. And while we were in Thailand, it was shut down and it was a huge operation and they needed a ton of people to help with these animals. So Michaela was kind of spreading the word and trying to get it out there that they needed help. I showed the footage to Joe and I had been begging him for a dog for years, saying that I really miss having a dog, I really want to have a dog, and basically the agreement that we came to was that when we move back to Europe, when we settle down, we will get a dog. When I saw these animals, I just, I desperately wanted to help. Here in Japan, the adopting culture, whether it's an animal or people, doesn't really exist. Some of my students are adopted because their parents couldn't have a child, and that is the scenario where people will adopt. But if they're capable of having children, then this society kind of looks at adopting as it's not your child. And most likely because of how I was raised, I disagree. I've mentioned in videos previously, I'm pretty sure that I would very much like to adopt if Joe and I have children. Um, we haven't decided yet, but if we do, I would really like to adopt a child from a third or a second world country and be able to just give them such a better life. And that, that would be my child. The same as our animals, they are our children. They are part of our family. And because of that mentality here, most of the animals at animal shelters will not get adopted and they'll unfortunately die in animal shelters. This isn't going to be a completely upsetting video, I promise. I just really want to make, um, to make this information known. I think it's really good to spread awareness. At Japanese animal shelters, it's 86%, I believe, of animals are put to sleep. For an example, most of my uh, subscribers are from the UK, and in the UK, 6% of animals at shelters are put to sleep. That's a huge difference. So when, when I saw what was going on, I was really, really fearful, because not only are there suddenly a huge number of animals that need homes, but these animals are gonna have very special circumstances and special issues. And that's another reason why it's really important not to buy animals in pet shops. If you can go to a rescue, 
organization go to a shelter and adopt an animal. There's so many reasons <laughs> that that is a better option, but another reason is in Japan, they don't really monitor the breeding of these animals. So if Kiyoni-chan had issues, they would keep breeding her anyway, and then her puppies would have those issues as well if they're genetic and hereditary. And a lot of those animals do pass away. I know Rachel and June got a cat from a pet shop and unfortunately that's what happened. Um, so I'll post a link to their video if you want to hear more about that. That was years ago. I remember watching that video and I started crying. How did we get Kiyoni-chan? I contacted Michaela on Instagram and said, basically, how can I help? Can I foster? Can I adopt? Like, what, what can I do? And um, she wanted to look into more of the process of what they were doing, of who they were letting have these animals and everything like that. So another reason that it took so long, because it's been three months since the puppy mill got shut down, since we heard about it, since we found out, and since we wanted to start getting involved. Japanese people don't often want to let foreigners adopt their animals. They don't understand us, they don't trust us, and they think that a lot of foreigners are going to get the animal here in Japan, and then when they leave Japan, they're also going to leave the animal behind, which would be a horrible thing for this dog that's already been through so much. I tried my best to let them know that, you know, we've had dogs before, not individually, but we grew up with dogs. We have two cats. We did two, not one, but two international moves with our animals. Um, so there was no way in hell we were going to leave our dog behind. No way in hell. And it's really expensive to move animals to other countries. I offered to show documents showing that we've done that. I've offered to show our bank account information. And I also mentioned that, you know, I studied for my master's up in Scotland and it was in wildlife biology and conservation. So I was trying to convey that we were really passionate about our animals and that we could be trusted. Luckily, because of Michaela's connections and Michaela, Joe, and I became really good friends, she was able to really vouch for us and to take away some of those worries, at least enough of those worries, that we were able to meet a couple of the dogs. We met a dog named Koyuki and a dog named Lewis and we just met at a park in Fukuoka and Joe and I took our time separately with them on a leash and walked them around the park and then switched basically so that we both got an individual feel for which dog was best suited for us, their personality. We ended up both coming to the conclusion that Koyuki was the best one for us. So we changed Koyuki's name to Kiyoni, just so you know. It's the same dog. <laughs> And then she basically had to think about whether or not she wanted us to have her for a while. A week later, we heard back from her, apparently after some prodding from Michaela. thank goodness. She asked a ton of questions about us, about our cats, about our apartment, the size of our apartment, the location, etc. And luckily we seemed to pass the test. So then we got to do a trial week. The trial week was basically to see how she would do with the cats and how she would do with us, and that let it become our decision of if we're keeping her or not. And the night that she was brought here, we said, we don't even need the trial week, we're keeping her. We're in love with her, instantly love her. She just, she's sweet. When she first came to us, she was really nervous and timid, but just gentle and sweet. Never once have we heard her growl or bark. I have no idea what her bark sounds like. I've heard her sneeze a couple of times. That's it. She's a Japanese Spitz, by the way. Michaela helped us out with the paperwork. Um, she was kind of our translator. We signed everything, and that was that that night. Because Kiyoni-chan came from a puppy mill, she does have First of all, some mental issues from that. So she does have panic attacks at night. Um, she just starts panting really, really heavy 
and so we've woken up multiple times. We haven't gotten much sleep in the last week. We wake up and we just try to talk to her quietly and comfort her and we didn't know if it was the darkness so we took the curtains and we moved them and we give her light by her bed. She hasn't really had much experience being around people um, so seeing other dogs makes her incredibly happy but it takes her a while to warm up to people and from what we've noticed she gets really scared of men. So I'm wondering if the puppy mill was owned by men? I don't know. She didn't know her name. She didn't know any commands, whether it be in Japanese or anything else. We knew we were starting from scratch uh, with training as well, including potty training. Unfortunately, she also has a physical ailment from the puppy mill. When she was there, she broke her leg and she walks with a limp. She doesn't feel pain anymore. Thank goodness, um, but it will cause issues in the long run, so we do have to get surgery to get it fixed. There'll be another video about that. But basically, she broke both of her, um, like the same thing with, with your arm, she broke her radial and ulnar bones, so you have two bones here. Um, she broke both those bones, and then she also broke one of the joints. And so now one of her other joints is kind of trying to overcompensate. It's it's you know, making up for the loss of that joint and acting as both the joints and it's just, over time, it's really gonna mess up her legs and mobility. But that's healed now and it healed improperly. So her leg bends at the wrong place, she has a limp. Thinking about what happened to her, like having to go through being impregnated and then having her puppies taken away from her over and over and over again. Thinking about the physical pain that she was put in, the mental anguish that she must have gone through, the, the quality of life that she had there, you know, she's scared of so many things. We're working with her on it. You know, she's, she's scared of elevators, but we're getting much better at elevators, aren't we? Yes, yes. She's scared of stairs. Um, she's scared of walking down them. I, it's difficult for her. Um, she's scared of toys. She's never had a toy before. She doesn't know how to play with them. Jo rolled a ball her way very gently and she ran um, when it got close to her. She was really, really scared. In spite of all those fears, she is so, so brave and she's coping so well. She lets everybody pet her, children, people, and like, she gets so happy when she sees other dogs. Um, for the longest time, that was the only time that I ever saw her tail wag. And she is so happy in the grass. You know, there's just so many new experiences for her. This is gonna be her first summer, so I wanna take her to the beach. Every day, we see progress with her. And it's been really, really amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slouch low for part of this. Wait, let me, ah, ah, ah. There she is, uh, so that you can see my baby a bit more. And, uh, we got her Wednesday night. I didn't have work on Thursday, and Joe didn't have work on Friday, and then we both had Saturday and Sunday off. So that was, you know, planned that way. That way we could be with her and make sure that she and the cats are okay and everything like that. Um, and the first day, she was in her crate and wouldn't really come near me for a while. Pretty much the entire morning and into the afternoon, um, she stayed in there and she seemed really fearful and you know, I just, I wanted to be patient and that's, that's all I did, you know? Um, I let her know that I was there, you know, I stayed in the room with her the whole time and I kept myself very open for her. Joe and I, the training that we do is um, all positive reinforcement. She gets in trouble for nothing. Nothing is her fault, honestly. Like any, any behavioral issues that has to do with her upbringing. She's three years old. You can't get mad at a dog that for three years, their entire life, they've lived on a concrete floor with a gate, you know, like surrounded in the small space by herself. There was no need in those circumstances for her to learn any skills or to get potty trained or anything like that. So she doesn't know it. So some of the issues that we've had 
it's just her overall fear of a lot of different things. We have to be really, really patient and kind of ease her into knowing what she should be afraid of potential. She's not afraid of cars. Like, part of me really wishes that I could like change like stairs for cars, you know? Because we, when we take her out for walks, she's just so happy and uh, she just doesn't care about cars at all. So we're trying to keep the leash like really close and, you know, make sure that she stays on it because she also likes walking in the middle of the road, um, which is a very silly puppy. I wish I could have vlogged more of it, but my priority has always just been on her, basically, and I didn't want to fumble with a camera and her leash or anything like that. You know, throughout this, I have like mobile videos and pictures and stuff like that. And then she loves grass. She'll just lie in the grass for as long as we let her. When we take her out to the P-A-R-K, because I don't want to say it in case she thinks, we've already been there today, she just will stay forever and if we make her leave too soon sometimes she's really stubborn and funny she'll actually like plant herself and we're like we have her on a harness that way we're never tugging on her neck or anything like that and also she's so fluffy that the collar that she wears first of all you can't see it second of all it doesn't it can't get close enough to her neck so like we had her collar that the foster mom you know brought her over with and we had our leash and one time she saw a dog and she spins like she gets so excited she spins and she jumps and all of this stuff and it just came right off her head one time with joe one time with me and we were like nope got a harness and it's not a problem now which is great you can barely see the harness in most parts of her as well she's so friggin fluffy she lets us brush her every day she slowly started becoming closer and closer to me and the first time that she wagged her tail at me was after being here for four days and it just felt so great and then like she started to get excited when i get, come home from work and you can just tell that she's happy to see me and it just feels so wonderful like she's really bonding with me and when i stand up and walk around the apartment she follows me so i have her and penny i have two shadows uh, including my own i have three shadows technically She's really starting to trust me. On Sunday, we were out with friends and I decided to bring her to this fair that was going on and see how she handled it. And if she didn't handle it well, we would just immediately leave. You know, that was fine. But like I said, she's really, really brave and she was great. There was this big dog there. The dog got really, really excited to see her and lunged. And it wasn't in an aggressive way or anything like that, but it, it definitely frightened her. And she ran behind me and like, it just, it made me feel like I was, I was her mommy. I was protecting her. And then she also, after like three days, started doing this thing where she takes her front paws and she puts them up on my legs, like just very gently, very delicately. And I, I just pet her and like, oh, my heart melts for this little girl. You know, we have so much training to do, but she's really smart. If you guys have any questions about any of the stuff that I've talked about, definitely comment below and let me know. I hope you're as excited as I am about having a dog. Well, you don't have a dog about us having a dog and you'll get to see her in more videos. I'm not gonna become a dog channel or anything like that, but you know, I'll definitely be including little snippets of stuff. And if you are my patrons on Patreon, you already knew about her, but this just tells you a lot more about the situation and her circumstances and everything. So her name is Keone, I forgot to mention, um, because she is named after the Greek goddess of snow, and I think it's very appropriate. And then also, we were able to really easily put that into Katakana. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of her, definitely uh, follow me on my Instagram, at Sunny Travels, because she's going to be all over my story for sure. <laughs> I can't wait to share her with you guys.